Welcome to episode 27 of Deeper Perspectives, the greatest spearfishing podcast in the 4.5 billion year history of the Earth. Already getting all geeky with the numbers, I guess, here, so I'm uh, a little excited. I've got a whole series of uh, podcasts about the physics of spearfishing, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I want to show you basically this uh, medieval torture device right here is just made to measure uh, the, the force that the bands are exerting. It's basically just a, a scale uh, on a winch. So let's crank that up and get it going. I wait for the day to come on. Okay, so I cranked it back. Got the band about to the point where the shaft would be notched. And we're at about 79 and a half pounds force. Okay, so now we just need to double that number to calculate in a second band. So we would have about 160 pounds of force in these bands, but there's a little thing called hysteresis, which says that unloading the bands will not give us the full force and so we're going to lose about a sixth of it and be down around 130 pounds. That leaves enough energy in the bands to propel this 930 second shaft at about 30 meters per second, which equates to 98 feet a second or 67 miles per hour. Let's use this shot as a real world example to test our math. All right, so to provide scale, let's measure the overhang of this shaft. I got, I got 12 and a half inches. So we have this scale at 12 and a half inches, or about 0.31 meters. And we'll advance the video forward one frame, which is about 1 30th of a second, and see that the shaft has moved 32 inches, or 0.813 meters. When you calculate that out, that means the shaft would have moved 25 meters per second. So I'm off about 15% from my calculation of 30 meters per second, but I'm pretty happy with the number anyway, because one, our methods here are not perfectly exact, and two, the shaft should begin decelerating as soon as it comes off the bands anyway. Now let's take a look at deceleration. By standing on this little underwater hill above a sand slope and shooting the shaft horizontally, I can then measure with my real line the distance that the shaft travels before reaching zero forward velocity. Okay, so I got the line stretched out and I'm gonna see how far this thing flew. Looks pretty far, huh? So twice I stretched it 24 feet, and then the last time I stretched it about 9 feet to the knot. So what is that? 24, 24 is 48, and 9, 57 feet. Using these numbers, we find that our shaft experiences a force of about 3 Gs, or de deceleration of 26 meters per second squared. Let's use another real world example to check our work. We can look at the video and see that it takes 4 frames for the shaft to hit the Pananu. Using the deceleration of 26 meters per second square that we calculated, along with the 30 meters per second initial velocity, we can estimate that the shaft traveled 3.7 meters or 12 feet. This one is a little harder to estimate since the shot is not perpendicular to the camera. But if we mark this 5 foot shaft as starting here and moving 1 shaft length, 2 shaft lengths, plus a little bit, I'd say we're pretty close to the estimate of 12. Alright, I didn't include all the calculations I did because it made the podcast way too long and even more boring, but I'll write an article or put up a blog so you can check my work and uh, it'll probably lead to a bunch of lively and likely slanderous discussion you know how the internet is but that's good if if you know a lot about physics uh, feel free to correct me on this stuff I'd, it's 
figure out some cool stuff. Uh, yeah, none of this was too profound, but you can use these basic calculations, and in the future, uh, we'll, maybe we can better understand, figure out the range of the guns, and understand different shaft and band combinations, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, thanks. Uh, contact me if you have any ideas.